Someone please explain to me why y'all are so mad at Denisha because I keep seeing video after video about her on my For You page and saying how she needs to take accountability, but no one explains what she did wrong. And I'm so confused. I try looking it up, nothing comes up. I also find it very telling when people are unable to garner attention outside of controversy. You built your entire platform around controversy. What the hell are you talking about? But the original point I was making is that people do things that will get a predictable reaction and then act surprised that that reaction occurred. Granted, I know everyone is entitled to an opinion, but that one was a little, that one was a little, you know, biased. I really don't appreciate being called weird, especially by someone who has been trying to disprove that they're an AI for the past however many months. Um, we have to address this. Sorry to my regular audience that I'm still giving this airtime. I promise platform and jealousy and bitterness will not be a regular occurrence. And I'm not going to argue with people over this, as I've stated. As I've stated. As I've stated. Thanks to the internet, we no longer know how to coexist with differing opinions. Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to Boss Girlified, where we have conversations around women topics, societal pressures, especially being, you know, a woman in business. There has been a creator on TikTok named Denisha Carter that has been gaining a lot of backlash. If you are on TikTok, you have certainly seen her TikTok videos pop up on your For You page. She tends to talk about other creators' um, videos and giving her own input on what she thinks about whatever topic is at hand. Let's keep it a band, right? She is what 90s love was all about, bro. Being submissive, being there for your man, going crazy, being that nigga, popping his ties, breaking his, coming back together, arguing, toxic. This is some 90s love type shit. A lot of y'all females- I'm gonna stop you right there. One, toxicity is not to be glamorized. Avoid men and women who attempt to convince you that it's a good thing that you tolerate being mistreated. She is a woman, and so she tends to talk about a lot of things that have to do with being a woman, beauty standards, kind of similar to what I do. She is a content creator with about 1.7 million followers as of recording this video. She has a very simple formula, just a straight up close shot of her face, just straight up talking to the camera about an issue that she finds important. Anisha is a popular influencer who goes off of content controversial statements and just stating her opinions. The one controversial statement that got her the platform, honestly, that she has today is the statement on where she said insecurities are up to the person that has them. It's not celebrities or influencers job to not make people feel insecure. It's we're on our own, basically. Granted, I know everyone is entitled to an opinion, but that one was a little, that one was a little, you know, biased, but it's whatever. That's not what I'm talking about. So right now, a lot of people are kind of fed up with her, and I kind of understand why. Like, I am the type of person, I don't like to take things at face value. I like to question things. I like to consider things as well. So when I first saw a few videos circulating about how Denisha Carter is not a good person and is not a good content creator and is not someone that people should be looking up to, I got curious and decided to look into why exactly people feel this way because it was kind of hard to trace back where exactly this hate came from. I'm sure a lot of you guys are also confused, so that's why I came on here today, did some digging, and found some really interesting information out about this whole situation. So in this video, I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a quick deep dive into her platform, where the hate all started, her response to the hate, and my thoughts overall on the entire topic. Her first video publicly on her platform today is from March 25th of 2021. Now, I'm not sure if this was her first ever video on the platform. Oh my god, did you see the new girl? What new girl? Over there. I think her name's Jenny. Is she pretty? No. She just started out by making, you know, cute little videos, just stuff that you would see at your average TikToker post. Then she posted this video captioned, I want more for women. Hashtag for you page, hashtag dating, hashtag girls. On May 10th of 2021. She continued with the same format of stitching other people's content and adding her own input to it until striking gold. The first video of hers to really blow up on her page today is captioned, killing off small businesses won't help income inequality or shift us away from capitalism. It'll just hurt people. It is currently sitting at just under 200k likes and again this is another video of her stitching another creator's tiktok and providing her own point of view but if they raise the minimum wage how do i keep my business open <laughs> then go out of business that's capitalism it's the free market you know what's funny about takes like this is it actually isn't it's not much of a free market if the government is meddling in it albeit by mandating wages or shutting down businesses for over a year 
But that's not the main point I want to make here. I want to make a point that people like you who have this opinion don't seem to realize. You're actively arguing against your own goals right now. Now, this was also the first video on her page to receive a lot of controversy and a lot of people disagreeing with her. She would continue to post similar content until again, once again, striking gold. Except for this time, it was a diamond that absolutely propelled her platform. What is something people are not ready to hear? Your insecurities are your problem. It's not a Kardashian's job to be relatable enough for you to feel comfortable. It's not a magazine's job to be relatable enough for you to feel comfortable. It's not an influencer's job or a model on the runway's job to be relatable enough for you to feel comfortable. Sure, honesty is important, especially for young people who need to know the images they're seeing aren't real. But if you, as a fully grown adult, can't decipher between edited media, edited people, people who are paid to look perfect all the time, doctored images, to the point that it's mentally destroying you, it's you who needs to step away. Everyone else doesn't need to change. It's much more logical to raise stronger people who understand the world does not revolve around their feelings than trying to force other people to change the way they live to make others feel adequate. July 3rd of 2021. This video created a ton of discourse in the comments. It left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths, however, it still helped her build a platform. Now, her page recently, especially within the last few months, has been exponentially growing. However, beyond the normal hate one might expect to receive being on the internet, which for her would be people calling her a blackfisher and narcissist and egotistical and an AI, the recent backlash she's been getting is a little bit different because everyone's chiming in on it. What I think propelled this whole conversation to everyone's for you page was this altercation she got into with another creator. Now, this was a such a dumb situation honestly like even thinking about it right now i'm like why was this why was this a big deal this creator made a video talking about how he got blocked by another influencer for giving the name of the brand of a hat that was included in her video the funniest thing just happened to me so i'm scrolling on my free page and i see this video where this girl's like pack with me like all of this stuff is going into that bag and somebody commented and was like where's this hat from and the girl who had posted the video was like, um, go to the link in my bio, like hit my profile, go to my list, like check all my things. And I was like, that's kind of crazy because the logo is right there and it's like not an obscure logo. So being the good citizen that I am, because we don't gatekeep in this house, I was like, oh, it's an acne hat. I shit you not, I literally come to that and I like, I literally scrolled down like a video or two and then I came back up and I was like, you know what? Like, I kind of like her aesthetic. Like, let me follow her. I tried to follow her. It was like, no, you can't. I was like, wait a minute. So I checked, that girl blocked me in like less than a minute for not gatekeeping an acne hat. The reason why this influencer who the guy commented the name of the brand on got upset is because she had responded to people to go to the link in her bio to go check out the hat. And Denisha Carter responds by saying that she would basically do the same thing. I would have blocked you too. Well, I probably would have just deleted the comment, but I understand why the poster is mad. Let me start this off by saying, yes, I have a bias here, and I also completely understand that those of you who are not content creators probably won't care about this because it doesn't affect you. Making money as a creator is incredibly difficult to do, and the creators that you see living a luxurious lifestyle, I guarantee you it isn't off of a TikTok check. It's from multiple streams of creator money, a combination of several monetized platforms for the very lucky ones, long-lasting brand deals. Other than that, they're still working regular jobs or living off of their parents. That being said, having a storefront or an affiliate link is one of the ways you can make money as a creator. When you buy something from a creator's storefront or their affiliate link, they make money, and I think they deserve it. You're watching TikTok and getting style tips, aesthetic tips, food and cooking tips, comedy, music, for some of you, a personality, for free. You're not being asked to tip, and you're not paying a monthly fee. So when people post things that you then want to buy because they showed it to you and they reroute you to a link so they can get tangible credit for doing so in a way that costs you zero dollars and arguably is helping you because it's a direct link to the product and you go out of your way to circumvent that or undercut it and then post a video about it encouraging people to go bother her when she didn't do anything wrong 
It's giving hater. I also love to go and look and see what people pin to their page because it's usually important information that they want people to know about them or in general or something they're proud of. You're proud that someone found you so obnoxious and weird they had to forcibly remove you from their space? I also find it very telling when people are unable to garner attention outside of controversy or bothering someone else. The reason that she said this is because influencers are really reliant on their sponsorships and their brands and so on and so forth. However, one of the videos that she blew up from was about how service workers should not get upset at people for not tipping. It should be the responsibility of the company. So people thought that that was quite a discrepancy and they, it just left a bad taste in people's mouth. Now this is what led a lot of people to give their own videos about why they disagree with Denisha Carter and why she's egotistical, maniacal, just all of these different things. It kind of spiraled into people throwing out just any and every allegation under the sun. I also find it very telling when people are unable to garner attention outside of controversy. You built your entire platform around controversy. What the hell are you talking about? If I recall, your very first video that I saw of you, you were telling people that their insecurities are their own problem. Their Kardashian celebrities, the media, they bear zero responsibility in instilling insecurities in people. You were telling people that they were adults and that it was their job to figure it out. Never mind the fact that it's not just adults that are online, it's children, it's teenagers who are developing these issues. I knew Denisha Carter was unserious when she came up here with them blue contacts on talking about some insecurities aren't the fault of capitalism. But what really gets me is she went on this whole rant about how it's not the fault of the consumer for not tipping, it's the fault of the business for not paying people enough, right? But then she turns around and dies on the heel that us consuming her content but not pressing her affiliate link is us as consumers not recognizing how she's exploited by a larger system. You want me to empathize with you when you couldn't empathize with service workers? Mind you, I myself am a black creator. I'm also an independent artist. But for her to advocate against tipping, then turn around and recognize that as black creators on social media, capitalism has exploited our work, our mannerisms, our words, and paid us little to nothing to the point where we have to rely on 5% commission from companies that are exploiting our people quite literally. Shein, Amazon, you name it. The cognitive dissonance is crazy. People are calling this girl homophobic, transphobic, all types of phobics, all types of isms, and you know, coming for her appearance as well. Um, as a lot of you guys notice, she does wear blue contacts, and I am not the person to judge or talk about anyone's appearance, especially the way they carry themselves. I am very heavy on like let people express themselves in the way that they do and don't pick on them for it. So that didn't rub me the right way. She did respond multiple times to all of these different videos that are coming out about her. And I want you guys to keep in mind too, it is many, many, many videos. It's not just one, it's not just two, it's plenty of videos piled and piled up of people basically saying their think piece on why Denisha Carter is not a good influencer. We have to address this. Sorry to my regular audience that I'm still giving this airtime. I promise platforming jealousy and bitterness will not be a regular occurrence. And I'm not going to argue with people over this, as I've stated. If you want to clip a video where I said, Nobody is obligated to tip no fucking body. This is really interesting because throughout my time as a server, consistently the most needy and most demanding and the most disgusting and rude people do not tip. I preface this by saying, yes, if the service is good, I tip. Yes, if I am needy, I tip. But the main point I want to make here is, every time this conversation occurs and does not end at the conclusion of, hey, we should probably stop whatever corporative lobbying allowed corporations to get away with paying people $3 an hour. Or, hey, we should form a server's union. Corporations win and you're doing a clown dance. Customers are not responsible for making sure that servers can pay their bills. And servers should not have to rely on tips to pay their bills. And the fact the fact that corporations have successfully convinced the two parties to be mad at each other over a very overt wrongdoing by corporations is a scam so great it belongs on a list in a museum. That's what I actually said, by the way. It's almost like full clips have context. Imagine actually watching the video you're mad at. Anyway, if you want to lie and say that I said I don't tip or was advocating against tipping when I was simply saying that corporations should not be able to use tipping as a way to get out of paying a living wage, that's fine. I can't stop you from being dishonest. But if you're going to claim that I'm homophobic or transphobic, when I've made several videos defending the LGBTQIA community, have defended that community in real life, and have never been homophobic or transphobic, 
you need to come with some receipts, real ones. The fact that so many of you get on the internet and just lie about things like that, and that so many of you just readily believe it, is very disgusting. Let's have a little integrity. If I was such a bad person, you wouldn't have to lie to convince people of that. So, citation needed. Quickly. So this was my thing. He made his initial video, like, laughing about the fact that she blocked him. Then he made a follow-up video mocking the fact that everybody had gone to her page and was laughing at her and picking on her until she went private. The two videos together is why I stitched him. But the original point I was making is that people do things that will get a predictable reaction and then act surprised that that reaction occurred. So him being like, look, she blocked me over this. All I did was comment the acne hat. My point wasn't that influencers need to be paid for their affiliate links. I don't give a shit if you don't buy from influ like influencers affiliate links. My point was that if you go into where someone is selling something or is doing something to make money and you cut that off, it is very obviously predictable that they're going to block you. Taking that, making a video and being like, she blocked me, this is too much, this is extra. And then when everyone goes and dog piles on the girl and making a second video to be like, look, ha ha ha, you guys are now all dog piling her. She's privating her account. It's super weird. That was my take. I thought it was cruel of him to make it a whole thing as if this girl did something wrong. And in general, I think it's weird that people do things that will elicit an obvious reaction and act shocked or victimized based on that reaction. She did also make a video on YouTube titled How to Handle Hate. And in this video, she gives advice about how to deal with hate. And she talks about how not everyone who gives an opinion deserves to be taken seriously. And she also says that you have to work on the internal so that the external can't affect you and that you have to work basically on yourself. That way you don't seek outward validation. She also says that people hide their hate behind constructive criticism without constructing anything themselves. And I thought that was a really funny sentiment that she added in there. To my knowledge, no one making these videos is directly trying to cancel her or is directly trying to send hate to her. Now, the biggest thing that Denisha Carter emphasizes is that you can disagree with her. However, I will say it is a little bit hypocritical for her to get mad at these people or even consider it hate when a lot of these people are just genuinely giving their own opinions. A lot of the videos that I've seen are just people giving their own opinions on Denisha Carter and why they feel the way they do. And a lot of it is, I can see why they think the way they do. And you know, I'm not gonna change anybody's mind. And I am the type of person, I like to listen to other people's perspectives, even if I don't necessarily agree. However, what I will say though, is that there are a lot of people that are using this opportunity to hop on a bandwagon and just kind of throw out any type of accusation to cancel her. Now that's what I find very particularly odd. You shouldn't, like why are you making something up? There are plenty of people on the internet who are genuinely terrible human beings. There is no need to make something up about someone. I mean, you can disagree with Denisha Carter. You can disagree with her. You are not supposed to get along with everyone. You're not supposed to agree with every single opinion someone says. That would be, first of all, you would probably be a people pleaser and that is a very unhealthy habit to have. So it is completely natural for you to disagree with someone, but I, what I find specifically odd about this situation is the amount of people that have just come out of the woodworks who were hiding in the shadows, just waiting for something like this to happen so that they can come out and say something about her. And again, those people who are also, you know, mocking her appearance, even bullying her, I'm sure she's getting bullied because I know how the internet can be sometimes, especially if you piss them off you know and just people making things up it's just that's where i draw the line a little bit and that's what makes me question um the reasons a lot of people have for canceling people i feel like a lot of the times the problem with cancel culture is that it, they just want to take someone's platform down nine times out of ten it's not really about you know serving justice it's not really about that anymore i think it's more so about just anyone that they can anyone that they can tear down they will for me this whole situation revealed one thing and one thing only how out of touch we have become when it comes to social skills thanks to the internet now what i mean by this is that we have completely forgotten how to coexist with people who have differing opinions than us and i think that's because with the internet um i think it's 
a lot of things but with the internet you can comment anonymously you can you know hide behind a screen and say stuff that you probably wouldn't say in person and when you're behind a screen or even in this type of climate where we're so used to going back and forth with each other on the internet especially about let's be real sometimes very irrelevant topics it can be hard to actually have those real serious conversations face to face in person when the time comes a lot of us nowadays we resort to name calling bullying um you know what i mean just because we disagree and this also goes into the conversation of the lack of nuance on the internet and the lack of nuance period now i hate the idea that like we need to be more nuanced uh there is this such a nuanced uh cre content creator like oh they're just so nuanced because the reality is as humankind we will probably never reach the point where we are completely nuanced in anything but we can try our best to be as nuanced as possible and expose ourselves to different topics now the problem that lies with this whole internet culture and especially on tiktok is that people bully push people away and push people into hiding when it comes to the opinions that they have just because they don't like it. People are going to have the opinions that they have in the first place. Even if they don't say it out loud, even if they hide behind a screen, even if they say it behind closed doors, even if they don't say it publicly ever, there are still people out there who have opinions that are going to differ than you. There are people who you work with that have opinions that differ from you, but you have to learn how to work together because that's the only way our society is going to continue to function the way it should and i am honestly concerned this whole situation as i said has kind of proved to me that tiktok is kind of um the, a good representation and example of this exact problem that we're having right now it's the reason why we tend to focus on completely irrelevant topics it's the reason why and as a content creator and i'm sure if you're a content creator watching this you can co-sign on this i see it all the time people in the comments arguing about the dumbest stuff like the dumbest things resorting to name calling and so on and so forth things that they would never say in person it's just it's really sad to see and um i have to say that denisha carter does seem to be a very self-aware person and has a better grasp on reality than a lot of people which can be seen as a threat especially because she is a beautiful girl she is smart she you know has a good grasp on reality she seems very confident in herself because she doesn't need to rely on anyone else to tell her what to do and um i would i would second on that as well as a creator myself i have seen like people on the internet can be so brutal about the smallest things especially if they see you as a threat so i think honestly a lot of what this stems from this backlash and this train of content that's been coming in about denisha carter i think what it really stems from is um people being threatened by her and a lot of things are very simple like that you know what I mean like it seems like so repetitive but a lot of things are genuinely just that simple there are lots of people that are disagreeable on the internet but do, do just fine I mean of course there's still gonna be hate here and there but there are never full-on hate campaigns against people like let's just say DJ academics sometimes you know people like myself I do call out DJ academics here and there on my TikTok account but for the most part I don't really see like full-on hate trains and most of the time when those creators get hate it's for a valid reason but the reason why Denisha Carter is getting hate is just because people don't agree with her opinions which is crazy to me like I said there are real people out there there are actual pedophiles predators on TikTok, and you guys are investing your energy into trying to cancel and tear down a black woman who has built a platform for herself just off of talking about opinions she has not at least not that i know and at least not that anybody else knows she has not physically harmed anyone she has not bullied anyone and she has not you know really done anything too severe to the point that would elicit such a response I will say though, um, you know, she does respond in a way that might um, rub a few people the wrong way. But I will say that, um, you know, you don't know any creator. You don't know any creator behind the closed doors. Basically, moral of the story, the hate is because people disagree with her. And this is going to happen more and more and more if we continue down this path. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I really do hope you guys enjoyed, and if you did, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and comment your opinions about this topic in the comments down below. Anyways, I will see you guys on another video soon. The Boss B is signing out.